Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love online, about to read 2 Timothy chapter 2. All right. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must first be partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. If these things, of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to profit, to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom are uh, Hymenius and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender stripes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the, advent, to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Now, we're going to go back over that, verse by verse from 6.40 to 8 minutes. I interrupted the group with a little guessing game. I wanted them to see if they could find the scripture. While they're doing it, see if you can find it. 
Then at eight minutes, we get right back into the message. Check it out. Now, going back to the beginning. One of the things that jump out is that one of the things that jumps out at me when I read it is verse four, verse three and four. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Now, I want you to tell me. I'm going to turn the mics on real quick. Because I want to ask you guys. I want you to answer me on this. All participants are unmuted. I want you to tell me what verse in the Bible reminds you of this. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Huh? Resist the devil and he shall flee. Okay, that's one. I'm looking for a particular one. A lot are gonna a lot are gonna back up what this says, but there's one particular one I'm looking for, and I want to see if y'all Bible scholars can pick it out. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Uh, how about do not uh, 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 love this world? Uh, uh, there's one where we. Don't love the world uh, because this is... Uh, yeah. World. Yeah, that's a good runner-up. That's a good runner-up. Very good one. Yeah, good runner-up. Okay, let's see. I'll give you another 30 seconds. What, Peter? The one where, like, the, the commanding officer asked Jesus to heal his soldier, and he says, like, what is it? Uh, uh, that no one had so much faith that, that they could believe that I could do it from wherever. Like, if Jesus commands him to do it, then it'll be done. Like, you know, like, like yeah, he's a man over what authority. Was the huh? What was the question? The question is, what verse does this make you think of? No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Uh, pick up your cross and follow me? No. Okay, that's a good runner-up. I'm going to say it now, now that you guys have wrestled with the word. This is the oh, verse yeah. I'm looking yeah. for. He that puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not worthy of the kingdom. See, when we get entangled with something, we are caught up, caught up in it. We're on emotional lockdown, psychological lockdown, whatever you want to call it. But we're, it's chained to us and we're chained to it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times what we don't realize is that we oftentimes get caught up in things, people, relationships, issues that hinder us from being all we can be for Christ. Now, for the, the first several years of our lives, that's a lot of healing, purging, and cleansing that Jesus does. A lot of deliverance he does in our lives. And what gets that job done more quickly is our honesty with ourselves. So when you look back, when your hands are on the plow, and you're looking back, you're doing what Lot's wife did. You're longing for what you left behind. When you are a soldier and you're going forward to war, you cannot concentrate on what you're leaving behind. You may miss your wife or your husband. You may miss your children. You may miss your civilian life. But right now is not the time to think about that. Right now, you've got to live through this war. You've got to live through the battle. Your mind has to be on watching, being aware, timing, strategy, 
knowing how to stay undercover so that, so that you stay out of the line of fire so you can get home alive in one piece, hopefully. So when you are at war, your focus has to be where your assignment is. Are you the man that works the Gatling gun? Are you the man that works the high artillery? Are you the explosive expert? What is your assignment? That is where your mind has to be. Because if you are focusing on what's behind you and you're, and you're assembling a piece of explosive and trying to figure out how to time it and where to plant it, something's not going to go right if your concentration is not on what you're doing, which means it may cost lives. So you cannot entangle yourself with the affairs of this life when you're on assignment. You're on your way somewhere. God has got his hand on you. Each and every one of you guys. And when you get caught up in the nee, 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 nee things of life, you become ineffective and neutralized in God's hand, no matter how much power God has. If you become neutralized, no matter how many times he pulls your trigger, you're gonna miss the target. So I hope I'm making this clear. So you have to, you have to be careful not to be entangled with the affairs of this life. You can't worry about he said, she said, she don't like you, he likes you, she likes you, uh, they said that about you, uh, she looked at me funny. And no, 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 you can't get caught up in that nonsense. You can't get caught up in somebody treated you a certain way, so you're going to be in a funk for a whole week. You can't waste your emotions on people and their pettiness. So here's, here's one prayer that will help shield you. This is your bulletproof vest because you must go to war with totally covered. So you keep your bulletproof vest on to protect you from the darts of the enemy. Okay? That's your, your shield of faith and, and, and the, the breastplate of righteousness. You cover yourself. So when a bullet hits you, when, an, when a, the devil's arrow hits you, nothing can penetrate. It may bounce off of you, but it won't penetrate. It won't affect you. It won't jack you up for a month and lock you down emotionally and have you all caught up in the nonsense. You so caught up in that, you can't focus on what God has for you to do. You can't focus in on what who God wants you to be. So caught up in what other people think about you, what other people say about you, how people looked at you or treated you. So caught up in that. You can't do it. You can't allow yourself to do it. You don't have the luxury to get caught up in pettiness. Now, before we get going too far, the name of this message is Scraps. Leave the scraps alone. Don't waste your time on garbage. Don't waste your energy on nonsense, on insignificant pettiness. Don't waste your emotions on strife and attitudes. Not even your own. You don't have the luxury for it. If you want to grow in leaps and bounds, you will deny yourself the right to get a funky attitude and a foul disposition when somebody treats you unfairly. You can't get caught up. You cannot. What a, I have seen movies where people who have been trained in special ops and, and uh, the Green Beret, these fighters that go in, they sit there and they've learned all kind of special artil artillery. They've learned how to use certain types of weapons. They've learned advanced uh, 
warfare and advanced strategies. They learned advanced survival techniques, things that soldiers don't learn. They've learned. They've learned how to operate through pain, excruciating pain. They've been trained to endure extreme levels of pain and still get the job done in spite of a broken leg. Get the job done in spite of a bullet in the thigh. Get the job done in spite of a knife wound. Know how to use the earth, the elements of the earth, to cover that wound, dress it, and get on about your business in spite of the pain. And how to ward off infection while you're doing so. How to sneak up on your enemy unawares. They don't see you coming. And by the time they're aware of you, good, it's over. Because you've been trained that way. Now, if you are in that kind of training, you will not make the grade. You will not pass the test to become one of those special, specialized people. You won't be there if you're one of those that get caught up in your personal life. If you're one of those that don't like the way somebody said something to you and you cop an attitude and they see it and they see that your attitude is misaligning your judgment, is taking you off course, is, the, is messing with your timing, is messing with your strategy, with your crafty war techniques because you're caught up in what you're feeling. You're caught up in what you're thinking. You're caught up in what they did. How they said what they said. See, that's why we have to pursue God for inner healing. Because when you pursue God for inner healing, you will realize that the more you're healed, the less you have to deal with nonsense. The more you're healed, the less things hurt you. The less things hurt you. When the, these special lab guys, they work out, they work out, they, they do all the weights, they, they have to go through a lot of training dealing with extreme levels of heat, knowing how to shut that out of their mind and get the job done. How to face death and focus on their assignment, knowing that that might be their last. You cannot be the most important thing in your life. That's, that's, thank you. You cannot be the most important thing in your life. The things of the kingdom must rank higher than you. The purpose of God must take the utmost importance the first priority in your life should not be your feelings, but what God has told you to do. Now, I'm not the standard. I know that. Trust me, I know that. But I do want to share this. Because of God's help, keeping me focused, I can't tell you the amount of times I would have left the church and left what God called me to do had I been caught up in operating solely out of my emotions. Because I was what you would call a hurt feelings magnet. I was a disrespect magnet. I drew all kinds of abuse in the church. For some reason, I was a target. Constantly. Snide remarks, smart aleck comments, put downs, patronizing compliments. Um, or as my mother would call her, a backhanded compliment. Right. And they and they think you should be happy with it, even though it came with a slap. Now, if it hadn't been for God. I wouldn't even be part of the body of Christ. I would have cut all y'all loose. I would have said, forget this mess. 
And I might have even said forget God too. I'm at a church right now. God called me to be in the praise team. I'd be gone. I'd be gone if God hadn't told me to stay there. I love the people, yes. I like a lot of the people. I enjoy them. But there are still those individuals that spoil my feast of charity. And I'd rather be in the wind, to be real with you. But I still have to love them and forgive them and stay focused. I don't have the privilege of being caught up in my emotions and how what they do and what they say or what they don't do, what they don't say affects me. I don't have time for that. So when something hurts me, when something makes me sit down and cry, and yes, I get my feelings hurt. I'm 66 years old, been saved 35 years, and I still get my feelings hurt. And I still cry about it. But I was told by God to join the praise team. I do not have the privilege to pout and walk away. Because I'm on assignment. There are times I don't feel like getting up there and singing a song. I don't feel like singing praises and singing encouraging songs when I'm feeling discouraged. Sometimes when I bring the message to you guys, I don't feel like preaching an encouraging message when I feel down in the dumps myself. But when I do it, I end up preaching to myself. And when I play the message back, it lifts my spirits. I have to do what God told me to do. Now, you will learn as you grow because God has called every one of you guys in our group to leadership. Whatever form that is, it's leadership. And I see it in each one of you. Don't let your life get sucked down the drain over nobody else's nonsense. Don't waste your time. When my feelings get hurt, the first thing I do, the first thing I ask God to do, right on the money, Lord, take the hurt out and remove the anger that results from it. Help me forgive and let it go. That's my prayer. Every single time I feel that hurt coming on. Every time I feel insulted, rejected, whatever the case may be. That's my prayer. And Lord, if I'm reading something into it that's not even there, remove the effects. Remove the negative effects. Don't let me waste my emotions on that. See, sometimes you could be a, okay, let me put it like this. You could be a marksman in the spirit realm. You could be a specialized marksman. You never miss your target. You're good like that because God gave you the gift. He gave you the eye. Gave you the discerning ability. Gave you that knowledge, that wisdom. You never miss your mark. I'm not talking about living righteous. I'm talking about when God tells you to do something, you're on it. Like white on rice. But when life, when Satan starts to send the uh, scraps and throw all the scraps in your face and he starts to wear you down with debris and every weight and sin that would so easily beset you you get caught up in that and what happens your aim is off your timing is off Father, help me with this. Mm, mm, mm. You've got to ask God to give you a single eye. The Bible calls it a single eye. 
full of light where there's no darkness. You have to focus in like a laser beam. You see, let me show you this. You see my glasses. Imagine this line where the glasses are. I'm holding the glasses where the glasses themselves are, let's say, on the table or horizontal. And the earpiece, they are, the earpieces are straight up. They're vertical. Now, picture it as a protractor. The protractor measures angles. Now, this is a 90 degree angle, basically. Just go with me. This is a 90 degree angle. Now, if I aim something that's, a, that's 90 degrees and I stay at that level and at that angle, I'm going to hit the mark. But if I notch my earpiece one degree, just one degree, I'm going to miss the whole target mm -hmm. or skin it on the edge. I'm going to miss it. One degree off can make you miss the mark. You miss the mark at a crucial moment. Somebody's life can be impacted in a very negative way. It could be yours. Most likely it will be yours. And then what that will do is set you back for years. Because now you got to clean up the mess that results from your poor judgment call, from your bad timing, from your bad decision making. Now you can't be about God's business. You're too busy cleaning up your own mess. It's very crucial. And that's one of the reason, reasons why Satan throws things at you. He's steadily throwing debris at you. What happens when somebody's throwing dirt or sand? You close your eyes. You block, don't you? Right. But if you're equipped and you have the right kind of goggles on, and you have the right kind of equipment, no matter what they throw at you, you know it's not going to get in your eyes. So you don't give in to the reflex of blocking. You stay focused, and you keep moving forward because you're on attack mode. You're on assignment. You don't have time for ducking and dodging. You have to keep moving forward and getting about what you got to do. No matter what they throw at you, no matter what life throws at you, stay on point. Keep your feet plainly planted on the, on the foundation God placed you on. Don't let life, don't let your enemies, spiritual or human, or emotional for that matter, don't let your enemies throw you off your path. Don't let your enemies send you astray. Send you running with your tail tucked between your legs. Don't get caught up in your emotions of the situation. Keep yourself focused. Don't get off by one or two degrees. Stay. Stay focused. Keep that thing aimed at that target. Wherever you're headed, whatever your assignment is, stay on it. Stay faithful to it. Okay, let me go on down. I'm getting bogged down in that one verse, but it's so loaded. I could preach five hours on that one verse alone. No, I won't do that to you. But I got the gift of gab like that, like Davina, like Marlene, like Andrea. Hello. Okay, let's see. Uh, <laughs> uh, see, y'all can't say anything because I got you muted. <laughs> okay. Um, if a man strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. See, you don't get that, that level. You don't get to that new level unless you're doing this thing by God's, by God's law. You have to, you have to follow his instructions. Yeah, you can't lean to your own understanding and get the prize. Not going to happen like that. The husbandman that labored must be first partaker 
of the fruits. Do you have fruits of righteousness? Hmm? Or, do, or are you living up above, um, amongst a bunch of weeds? Weeds of sin. Choking out the light that God has put in you. All right, let's see. That's just a question I want you to ask yourself. Verse 9, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Mm, mm, mm. It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Now, listen. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. I'm getting ready to close. Life will throw some things your way. Life will be difficult. People will disappoint you, Jack. I mean, I don't care how much you think of people. Some of y'all look at me and you think, oh, she is such a good counselor. Oh, she's, a, she's such a good this, that, and the other. Baby, I will disappoint you. I hope, I hope I don't to the point where it disillusions you. But I'm human. I'm flawed. I'm not omnipresent. I'm not omni omniscient. Come on now. I'm not all knowing, all powerful, everywhere at the same time. I'm not. I'm human. And I'm flawed, sadly flawed. But even though God has me on assignment and you call me or you talk to me or you listen to me preach or you text me on the thing to get advice or whatever, I'm not, I'm not the last word on the word. God is the ultimate authority. And I may tell you something and I may think I'm right and I might be. Not too, not too on target. Whatever I tell you, you take it and check it with God. You never depend on any human being. I don't care how spiritual you think they are. They are flawed. Every one of us has this treasure in an earthen vessel. Don't put your trust in me more than you put your trust in God. No way, Jose. That's idol worship. Don't. I put my drawers on the same way you do. I sit on that toilet the same way you do. God is your ultimate source. That's the one. That's the one that really gets the job done. So you make sure you know who you're really leaning on. Don't ever put your faith in a person. People will hurt your feelings. People will disappoint you. People will make a commitment and forget. God does not. Hmm. So if you suffer for righteousness sake, going back to that, if things go wrong and people disappoint you and they renege on their commitment to you and they tell you something that wasn't that wise and, 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 and you suffer for it or you do something good and you end up getting blamed for doing something bad that you don't even know what they're talking about. You take that patiently. You return it with kindness. You ask God to help you forgive. See, these are, these are high levels of character here. This is something you got. This is talking about raising the bar, aiming high. Oh, man. Some people won't bother with this type of righteousness. It's that level of righteousness that gets God to move you higher and higher. You cannot fly with the eagles hanging on the ground with turkeys. You act like a turkey. You waddle like a turkey. You, 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 you make all the, you gobble gobble like a turkey. You do whatever. Your lifestyle is that of a turkey. Your attitude is that of a turkey. God cannot take you to the high places. 
you must reach high in your inner core, the areas where nobody sees you, nobody hears you, nobody can pick up your thoughts. But you know what you're thinking. Yeah, you know. How high do you want to go? How much of you do you want to deny? How much do you want to love God more than yourself? It takes a while to get there. But pursue that. Pursue it. Because when God becomes your head honcho in everything across the board, God can move you to places that he can't take everybody. Many are called, but few are chosen. Will you be one of the few? Or will you keep the status quo and be satisfied with the life of a turkey for the rest of your life? As you walk with the Lord, gobble, gobble.